Trinity Baptist Church's first ever online broadcast. I'm Lauren Young and here are our announcements for the week. If anyone is in need of assistance or a grocery or pharmacy run, call Brother Rod and let him know. Feel free to call the church and leave a message as well. You can call us at 405-262-4292. The blood drive scheduled for Thursday, March 26th is still on. It'll be from 3 to 7 p.m. and by appointment only. Call 1-877-340-8777 to schedule your appointment and find more information on our Facebook page and church website. Again, that number is 1-877-340-8777. We encourage you to check out our online giving service available on our website. Go to trinityelreno.com slash give to make a one-time contribution or set up secure automated giving. A quick reminder of some cancellations. The Senior Adult Spring Sing at Dover has been canceled and the Palm Sunday Community Service scheduled to take place at Trinity has been canceled as well. In these times of quarantine, we will be updating you week by week on whether or not we are having services. For now, there are no activities tonight or this coming Wednesday, the 25th. Continue to follow us on social media at Trinity El Reno and our church website at trinityelreno.com. Stay tuned for today's message from Pastor Rod Young. Good morning, Trinity Baptist Church El Reno and everyone and anyone else who's joined us here this morning you have joined us here for our first live stream ever uh, most of you know the reason why we're live streaming this morning no actual service here at our building this morning because of the uh, recent historical and difficult times that our nation is going through and unprecedented times really uh, I've heard many refer to, uh, to these times as being uh, biblical end time events. And let me assure you that they are. And uh, we've been living in the end times for many, many years now. And each year that goes by, each crisis that, uh, that we go through as people and the people of God as well, uh, each one of those is marching us forward. To the Lord's return. Now with that said, we don't know what day that will be and let's simply uh, as Christians concern ourselves living for Christ each and every day as we look forward to that day. And so as we deal with this threat of the uh, coronavirus, we find ourselves in the midst of something hardly anyone who is alive today has experienced, especially here in America and even in other parts of the world. You know, we've had a lot of crises in our lifetimes. We've had things such as tornadoes and hurricanes and tsunamis and earthquakes and floods. And uh, we've had things like the Oklahoma City bombing and 9-11 and Chernobyl and those sorts of events. We've even had World War I and World War II. Uh, but this one is different. Yes. All of those crises, uh, they were confined to specific parts of the world. Even World War I and World War II were, uh, though they were affected the whole world, they were confined to specific locations in the world. But this one is, is different. Uh, those, uh, those were specific areas, but this one is affecting the whole world and it's affecting all people throughout the world and uh, it's threatening nearly everyone in some way shape or form so this is a crisis of biblical proportions not only is the virus itself a threat but the economic impact that it's having on uh, our nation and the whole world really is uh, causing havoc in our society and so yes these are unprecedented and these are perilous times for us but let me tell you something we serve a mighty God. We, uh, we serve a God who loves us with an everlasting love. He's a God who has promised to uh, never leave us and never forsake us. And though we may sin against Him, though we may forsake Him from time to time, He has promised to never leave us 
and to never forsake us, to never stop loving us as his creation. You see, he is the creator of everything. Therefore, everything in this world is subject to his power and to his control, even this virus that we are experiencing at this time. Job 12.10 reminds us that in these words, he says, In the hand of the Lord is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. You see, Job knew, and you and I know as well, or we should know, that God is in complete control. It is his creation. Nothing that happens catches him off guard. Nothing is beyond his ability to deal with it. He's not surprised by any of it. In fact, he is able to use, use it all for his purposes and for his honor and for his glory. You know, in times like these, we, we hear about uh, uh, troubles and we hear, we hear myths about troubles, things that really are not true. One of those myths is this, God's children are immune to crises. Now, the opposite is that of that is actually true. We all have troubles. We all have trials and crises that come into our lives, Christians and non-Christians alike. Jesus says in John chapter 16, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we can find great comfort in the words of Jesus this morning. In Psalm 46, the psalmist says in verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. A second myth that you might hear is that a crisis is a threat to God and to his plans. The truth is that there's nothing that is a threat to God. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. And then he says, there is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing too difficult for God. There is nothing that God cannot handle because he is the author and the creator of this world. In fact, God can take any crisis and he can use it for good. He can use it for his glory. Now that doesn't mean that God always causes a crisis, but that his sovereign plan simply includes them. But because God is God, he can do and he does do what he wants, even if it involves something like this virus that we're going through right now. He might hold it back. He might heal us from it. He might make our way clear again, or he might allow it to overtake the entire world and have us deal with it in that way. But even if he does, it will still be within the scope of his plan because he is in complete control. We need not fear because God is in control. And there's nothing stronger than God or his ability to take care of us in the midst of these perilous times. The third myth is this, is that I can get through something like this in my own strength. That's a lie. Living victoriously through a crisis depends not on our own independence, but rather on our dependence upon him. He'll bring us through it, but we are powerless without his help. In Matthew 19, verse 26, Jesus told us, he said, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. In Philippians 4, 13, Paul says, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And so as we go face this together, we know that God will give us the strength to make it through. We need to relax. We need to depend upon God and he will help us through this. Yes, people may get sick. People we know may even uh, die because of this virus. Because even Christians are not immune from troubles. They're not immune from sickness. You see, the first person to die in Oklahoma was actually a pastor. And I'm sure that he was a very good man. I'm sure that he was a fine man of God from everything that I've read. But sometimes godly people dying are part of the plan of God. But God will give us strength and he will get us through it. So what is God saying to us in times like these? As a Christian, I can't help but ask myself that question. What is God saying to us through all of this? If you've ever 
gone through Blackaby's Experience in God study, you, you remember the, that there are seven truths to that study. The first one is that God is always at work around you. If you're a Christian, you should be aware that God has always been at work around you. And if you're a non-Christian, God is still at work around you as well. He's always been at work. And he's always been at work in the whole world as well. The second truth is that God pursues a love relationship with you. He pursues you and he pursues a love relationship with you. He wants you to know that he loves you. And uh, he wants you to know that his son died on the cross for you, paying the price for your sin and making it possible for you to be forgiven and for you to have eternal life so that you can spend eternity with him. And then thirdly, God invites you to join him. He invites you to join him by believing in his son, Jesus Christ, and so that you can be brought back into a right relationship with him. We've been preaching that message for 2,000 years now. And then the fourth truth is this, and that's what I want us to look at this morning as we ask the question, what is God saying to us in this time? The fourth truth is God speaks to you. While God is at work around you, while God is pursuing a love relationship with you, and while God is inviting you uh, to join him, God speaks to you. I have no doubt that through this coronavirus pandemic that God is speaking to us. God is trying to tell us something. I believe, of course, that he speaks to us as individuals all of the time and on an individual basis. But right now, I believe that God is also speaking to the whole world. If you have a Bible, you might turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. And we'll begin in, in verse 25 as we think this morning about what God is saying to us in this time. In verse 25, the writer of Hebrews says, Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we, we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth, but now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is is a devouring fire. Verse 25 starts out by telling us to be careful not to ignore and not to refuse to listen to the one who is speaking to us. And make no mistake, I believe that God is truly speaking to us right now. God desires that all men be saved. And I believe that he's giving us a wake-up call. He's giving the whole world a wake-up call. The question is, are we going to listen? Christians, are we going to get our lives right with God and get busy doing the business that God has for us to be doing? Are we going to get busy sharing Jesus with a lost world? If you don't know Christ, are you listening to what God is saying this morning? Are you prepared for eternity should things not go well for you and many others? Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, whether you're a follower of Jesus or you're not a follower of Jesus, Scripture says that it is appointed once for a man to die, and then the judgment. Verse 26 and 7 speak of God's speaking, and it says that His voice shakes the whole earth. Not only the earth, but the heavens also. You know, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord, and I believe that God is taking care of me eternally no matter what, no matter what this virus may bring or any other trial in my life. I see the seriousness of the situation, but I trust that Christ uh, is not going to allow me to be shaken in times like this. We see the power of God. We know what God is up to, but we who are a part of His kingdom know that his kingdom is unshakable. And then he says to us this, he says, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him 
in holy fear and awe. The fifth truth, fifth truth in Blackaby's study is that he brings you to a crisis of belief. And in this case, maybe this crisis is bringing you to a crisis of belief. In other words, what is it that you really believe about God? Do you truly believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Have you by faith trusted in Him for your salvation, for your forgiveness and eternal life? That's your crisis of belief. Do you believe that? Will you believe that? Are you going to trust in yourself? Or are you going to trust in Jesus? Let me close by sharing the last two truths here quickly. If, if by this crisis you are experiencing a crisis of belief, then you must make a choice to adjust your life. You must do something about it. Once you adjust your life, then you can truly experience new life in Jesus Christ in a right relationship with the Heavenly Father. You can do nothing and be on your own. You can be without God. You can be without His help and without forgiveness. Or you can simply adjust your life and by faith in Him, ask Him to save you. Call out to Him in prayer Trust in Him for forgiveness and for His salvation. The choice is yours. You must adjust your life. Acts 2.21 says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. John 3.16 tells us that God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. So how will you respond this morning to the Lord? What is God saying to you? And if you hear Him speaking to you this morning, what will you do about it? As we close this morning, I'd like to lead us in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, I pray that you're listening to the Holy Spirit as He has spoken through His Word this morning. And that if He's... Uh, if he's asking you to do something in your heart and in your life by trusting in him, I pray that you might do that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, speaking to us, even through trials and even through circumstances like we find ourselves in the midst of right now. We thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you never leave us, that you're never going to forsake us, even in times like this. Father, I pray for those out there who who uh, have never decided to follow in Jesus by trusting in Him and by having faith in Him. I pray that, that even today they might, by faith, trust in You. They might ask You to forgive them of their sin and come and live in their heart, and they might adjust their life and begin living for You. Father, I pray for other believers in Christ this morning that You would be with them, that You would watch over them, and that You would help us to fully commit our lives to you, to be willing to adjust our lives as you ask us to in the midst of all that is going on in this day and time. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to follow you and to trust you. Pray that you be with the, uh, the world in these circumstances and those who are dealing with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.